All right. Well, welcome back to the Move Podcast presented to you by Patron Tequila. JB, I, I think in 1978, if you tried to explain to that crowd that was just listening to those instructions of this insanely complicated physical challenge, and you said, oh my God, in you know, uh, 40 years, they'll be talking about this on a podcast. <laughs> Yeah, They're that super confused. That clip is incredible, and it <laughs> you'll have to go if you're listening to this uh, as you normally listen to podcasts. You'll have to see the video, which we'll have up on Facebook and yeah. YouTube. But the clip, it looks like it's a 1940. Right. It's this whole black yeah. and white clip, and it's just amazing. And it's just 15 people the first year yep. for Ironman Hawaii. 15 well, and, and, people and, crazy and, and, enough to do it. Right, and it was it was really just the combination of three events right they had an open water swim that existed they had a bike ride that existed and then they had the marathon that mm -hmm. existed and you know a group of these lunatics like-minded lunatics like us said well why don't we just do all three of them in one day and at the end of the clip he's like and we're gonna do these all in one day <laughs> <laughs> it really looks like an old government film. yeah it's cl yeah. classic and now they have 2400 athletes like if it was unlimited i can't imagine how many would show up but it's one of those things in sports that i i'm always fascinated by when people break through those barriers mm -hmm. show people that they can do it how many people are capable of doing it yeah. down the road yeah, i don't like, know if oh, there's yeah. a term yeah, for that but. yeah i don't know um but we'll get into that we'll get into right. talking about some of these superhuman athletes not just the tip of the spear the the, the best pros but also um you know obviously as you as you as you've seen the coverage over the years, it's just some great human stories. But one of the best humans that I've ever met in my life is Dave McGalvery. And, and is this just, by the time this podcast drops, uh, Dave, a lot of you will be listening at a time when, and Dave, uh, he's been very public about this. So I don't think I'm, I'm getting out of line here, but uh, he's been the race director of the Boston Marathon forever. Um, he's been on the forward as a mm -hmm. guest before. He's been a great and dear friend of mine. He's done the Ironman multiple times. Uh, he is one of the f most insanely fit people that I know is having a very, very major heart surgery, uh, probably as you guys are listening to this right now. So he's in my thoughts. I know he's in y'all's thoughts. Uh, for anybody that's been around the endurance community for a long time knows Dave McGalvery. I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, it's, that's the gold standard. And so, I mean, to me, and it's funny, in our pre-production call, we were talking about Diana Birch, who's been the race director at uh, of the Ironman World Championships for a long time. I mean, I, I sort of put Diane and and, uh, and Dave in the same category, and then I get this news, so it was ironic. But Dave, uh, we're pulling for you. We're thinking about you. I was texting with him as I was taking off down here to Austin, but he's in good spirits. He he wrote me back and he said, "I look forward to 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 getting out of here tomorrow and and healing up and running fast." And then parentheses er than yeah. ever. So yeah. I mean, he's just a beast. So. Love you, Dave. Yeah, that's cool. It's always tough when you know people that just great athletes yeah. lived a superior life in that world and yeah. still get yeah, issues. It's, it happens. It's not fair. Yeah. It's not fair. So, uh, so let's talk about the Ironman. I, you I know, know, I got to say, I I love, uh, first of all, it's good to be back with you, JB. Where have you been? Oh, welcome back. Where welcome back. I, had, I barely made it here. I'm like sprinting in. I was trying to leave Aspen this morning and I woke up and it's what, October 11th day before my son's birthday and and i looked out and it it was like it was christmas day it was just white and it, in this it was snowing uh, like i was in siberia i'm like i'm not getting out of here so I just a bunch of different plans drove to a lot of Junction. hustle to make it here hustle. for this serious hustle Art now are you really interested in getting here for this podcast or for metallica tomorrow night uh you know let's be honest i'm not gonna lie i think well tomorrow night's paul mccartney <laughs> Saturday night's Metallica. That's right. I got my days off. Doesn't matter. Both are, <laughs> I heard both have been great, but uh, we're, of course, talking about ACL Fest, which was last weekend and this weekend. But uh, no, I, I was just excited to get back in the studio and, and, and talk about uh, events that I love. Unfortunately, I never, you know, funny, we're sitting here. The only Ironman-esque thing I did on the Big Island was the 70.3 there in 2012, which I was fortunate enough to win. This is my trophy, uh, June 2nd, 2012. Greg Bennett pushed me hard that day and, and got second. And uh, Dave and I were putting some pistachio shells in here earlier yeah, today. Yeah, it's very functional. But look, these <laughs> everybody out there um, is is in for a tough one. I mean, you you just this is the one. 
event where you cannot hide. I mean, Kona is is a really, really special place. It's deceivingly hard. It's hot. It's windy. It's the conditions <laughs> and the distance we all know is just is, is really sort of unbearable for uh, for everybody. And so, well, I have to think that you're more excited about it because I've always thought that, you know, with a lot of sports, if, if you follow it and you dig into it, it gets exciting. You get to know mm. the characters and the players, and that's true of a lot of different sports. And so this being our second year mm -hmm. of coming back and covering Ironman, yep. um, I, I got to figure you're more excited about it. You're a little more attuned to the, to yeah, the players no, I, here. And I was surprised last year at, at, the, at the, uh, the, the viewership or listenership that we had. I was, you know, we come off the tour and, and I'm like, okay, is, how many people are interested in the Ironman relative to the Tour de France? And it was surprisingly big, sneaky big. And so it's, it's, it's fun to come back. And, and again, this is, I'm not, I don't, you know, I'm speaking English and understanding English. I know this game. I've done this game, you know, for a long, long time. And so, you know, last year we had Dave Scott and Mark Allen on. This year, uh, again, just super honored to have Andrew Messick, the CEO of Ironman Corp, Diana Birch, who's been the race director forever. And then the latest inductee into the uh, Ironman Hall of Fame, Scott Molina, one of the big four. Pretty special. And it's um, kind of a unique situation this year, and I know you're excited about it. Like, you came in, like, for from your communication as you were making your way here, you're more excited to talk about the women's race than the men's. Well, I'm, I'm, and, and that's not to be gratuitous. It's no. because you're genuinely excited about an athletic endeavor we could see take place. Yeah, I mean, this year, if if what I'm hearing is true, that that Daniela Reef actually has the potential to obviously win the women's race, but to not only do that, but to be top ten in the men's race. If that happens, I mean, that's happened before. Chrissy Wellington's done that. Um, if that, but nobody's ever done that in Kona. If, if somebody, if she can pull that off, that is, A, that's, I don't care if a guy wins by an hour, she's the patron of the day. I mean, hands down. But that's just, that's superhuman. Uh, that would be amazing to watch happen. Now, having said all that, I mean, this is Kona, right? Anything can go wrong. Flats. Uh, penalties, uh, misjudged you know, nutrition, just, uh, nutrition, <laughs> hydration, cramping. Um, this, this is, uh, you still have to go out and, and, and really, really prove that, 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 that you're the, uh, that you're an Ironman. And so, and for clarification, cause it, it, it could, it, it's a thing that could change the dynamics for a women's race. They do not start at the same, the elite women do not start at the same time as the elite men. Right. They start five minutes behind. Right. She's going to be reeling in a lot of people. She'll be passing, <laughs> she'll be passing dudes. But it's, if they were starting together, that could be uh, a really interesting well, dynamic would, for someone like her. Yeah, it would, it, it would obviously help her. Um, but it, it, it's, it's, look, she's not, the, the, they are separate races, and so it's, it's, uh, she's going to be fine just where she she's is. She's used but. to racing against herself anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, most likely. And going back for number four, I believe I have that correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other interesting story is this: is the story of Javier Gomez, who who you know was was a top ITU slash Olympic um, triathlete, then made the transition to half Ironmans and has just completely dominated that distance, and now is making his first go. At Ironman here, um, you know, the people I talk to, it's like almost with anybody, you're like, okay, there has to, what's the weakness? And people say, uh, there's, they don't have a weakness. And then you go, come on. And they go, all right, well, maybe if it's this, that, or the other. No, apparently this kid, like there's, no, he can swim, he can ride, and he can run. Uh, you know, the, the, it's too bad Jan Frodeno is injured and, and, and could not come back because he was uh, the overwhelming favorite if he, if he was there. But uh, we're going to see, my prediction is we'll see some very, very fast run times. I think I, think I can predict two things. Number one, we're going to see a very fast bike time, bike split in, in Cam Wharf. Uh, and then we're going to see some very fast runs. And then you have all these like X factors like Lionel Sanders and Sebastian Keenley. You know, who knows? You know, they, they got to battle back from a bad swim. And um, In your opinion, like how, how much does it work against someone or maybe it works for them for their debut Ironman Hawaii? I, I would I'd be nervous if I was him. I, I never I was never in that position. 
And actually, you know, uh, I spent years wishing that I had been in that position. <laughs> Looking back on it now, I'm actually glad I never, it would have been the pressure after winning two halves in 2012, going to Kona, um, it, the expectations would have been off the charts. And, and to do that for the first time and try to manage hydration and nutrition and heat and, and, and pacing and, and, and your effort, I would have. In the media. I would, I'm just <laughs> saying I would have fucked it up. I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And I'd have been parked on the side of the road, like laid out, crying for my mom. <laughs> Seriously. Well, it's interesting, too, when you look at recent history. The Australians took six straight titles. Yeah. Now the Germans seem to have it in their court, yeah. right? What's going on with that? Are there development programs there, or it's just swinging that way randomly? Or is, are triathlons bigger in those parts of the they world, are, they, they are bigger in, the in those parts of the world, for sure. Um, they, but, but, but it's it's like any sport; it's it's cyclical, and and uh, you know there, there'll be a time where uh, I don't know the 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 Russians are good, or the Japanese are good, or the Americans are good again. It, it's it's yeah, that that's the nature of all sports. So let's talk about the men and they're on who, the, they're uh, just you can edit this out, but they're on the Skype now. These. Uh, Okay. Uh, Andrew and, and Diana. Okay. Can we text them to give us five more minutes? Okay. Okay, keep going. What were you going to say? Uh, okay. L- l- so let's talk about the men that yeah. are of interest outside of, you mentioned Javier Go- Gomez, this newbie wild card. They right. say he's got the talent, right? right? So right. that's something interesting to watch. Yep. With Lang's running talent, it always seems to favor the great runners. Yep. Is that likely the case again this year? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think it's. I think Kona always favors. I, the bike course is hard. I mean, there's six thousand vertical feet of climbing. It's windy, so you can't discount that. But uh, at the end of that day, with the heat and the pressure of that race, uh, the run is always going to be. It's always going to be the determining factor. Now, you know, if you could ride four fifteen and run two fifty five, you could do it. See, that was my next question. Yeah, that's, so there are there are a couple of key players here that are better cyclists than Lang. That guy, th- those guys are, that's Lionel Sanders. Yeah. Those times I just, that's Lionel Sanders. That's what yeah. he does, right? And then Worf is and, another. But Worf r- couldn't ride maybe 405 or but somewhere between 405 and 410, but he's going to run 310. Now he's, mm-hmm. he's talked a lot about really trying to improve his running, focusing on his running, changing his training, losing weight. Look, uh, we're going to find out Saturday. And so, and then there's this whole other batch, right? The, the Langs and the Keenleys who, who, you know, can't swim in water, much less, you know, drink it. And so uh, they've got to ride and run fast. Now, I, I know this is a tricky question, but I, I assume some of these riders that are better on the bike and they know that, you know, Lang is a great runner. We've seen it. How much of a gap do they need? Like, th- if their goal is probably to get 30 minutes on him on the bike, like, yeah. what do they have? JB, I mean, there's no, there is no th- there's magic formula. It's, yeah. it's the guys like Cam Worf or even Lionel Sanders that, that try that, they're just really rolling the dice. And I'm not, I'm not, that's what they have to do, right? They, you can't, you'd be a fool to sit back and ride with, with Patrick Langa and Sebastian Keenley and Fredano and, 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 and Gomez who can run low 240s. Like you, you have to, you have to take you that have to risk. gamble and you, you have to, and, and you have and, to bury yourself on the bike, which put, makes you that much more fatigued yeah, when you run, it's, right? It's, it's there, look, then there has to be a balance, right? So if, if, if you can ride five minutes slower and run 10 minutes faster, well, that's five minutes faster. Even I can figure that out. So it's it's uh, but you know, then you layer in all the emotion and, and the, the 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 nerves and the intensity of being in the race, and you know, you always go harder than you probably should, and mm-hmm. it takes a really mature, experienced person to to really put it right on the limit where they need to be and keep it there, mm-hmm. right? And you start, you know, and so it's it's uh, and you asked me earlier about or when we were just chatting before we started doing the show is like the the, the idea of an out and back, right? Mm-hmm. Just seeing guys at a turnaround, like mm-hmm. that's an emo like 
that is an emotional they, competitive They see it thing. on the bike and the run, correct? You see it, well, you, you see it, yes, multiple times. And so, you know, you got to just take that out of it. Yes, you might be up by a certain amount or, or, or have an impression of the way somebody looks at the turnaround. No, you have to stay within yourself, especially, uh, you know, at an event like this because it's just, it's just, it's not over till it's over, as we saw last year. I mean, You're really kind of racing against yourself to a degree, right? If you worry too much about the competitors, you does are, that throw well, yeah. you off? Yeah, I mean, there are times. I mean, we, we, I mean, obviously, 1989 with the Iron War is one thing, but we'll never see that again. Two guys side by side for eight hours. That'll never, ever happen again. But, uh, yeah, most of the time it is truly an individual time trial. It's not a, it's not a boxing match. Now we've got it. We touched on it last year, but maybe we have a lot of new listeners that uh, haven't heard the discussion. Lionel Sanders and his pain cave is just warrants conversation. I, I don't. I don't. I don't get it. I don't get it. He spends, does most of his training. <laughs> Go on his Instagram. It's all on there. His 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 Lionel Sanders try. I think it is, and he yeah he's the swims inside. He does it all inside, and then heats up the room. I mean, what I've read, whether and I maybe I should go back and look at some of those Instagram pictures. He has a photo of the moment when Langa passed him last year on the run, yeah. and he's been staring at that for a year yeah. on the treadmill, and and a, and a you know a stationary bike. Hey, you know what? I I mean I wouldn't do it ever, ever, ever. Um, but if you can if you can tolerate that and, and pull it off, then that's amazing. I mean, hats off to him and. It takes a special person to be able to, or maybe I mean, crazy. I don't know. It's but. a little nut. I mean, the only I've never heard from the guy his reasoning for doing that, and I'd love to hear that. But I, I do know some people who like to try to stay injury free. Treadmill softer, less likely to have a bike accident. And he lives in Canada, where it's you know most of the times probably like going to put you, you indoors know, for a certain amount yeah, of months it's like a blizzard but but we can only guess why he yeah does. you just think it's just nutty i just think it's he <laughs> but he has listen he has a complicated history I and mean, this is a guy who he, he, you know he didn't grow up just you know playing sports in high school and then became a professional athlete. like he had he deviated hard and so he's got you know a history with substances and addiction and which makes his story Honestly, I mean, that much better. I mean, it's an incredible story. His comeback from, from you know, by all accounts, was Skid Row. And so, as far as I'm concerned, the guy can... It's a success. The guy could do whatever he wants to do. Yeah. Right? This is an amazing comeback story. Just forget sports, but just in life. And so, you can't not cheer for the guy. And then you see him running. He runs like he's... Like he's, like he's got three legs. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to watch. Mm-hmm. But it works. Yeah. So, yeah, like I said, you, you, you kind of really got to cheer for the guy. He's, he's, the, he's the eternal underdog, right, in this event. Because then you see that, and then you see a, a guy like a Gomez or, or a Langer running, or even Keenley, I mean, or Fredano. They, they run like gazelles. Yeah. And then it, it, it's, so it's, it's cool to see. He's, he's, a, he's a warrior. And JB, we have uh, a real honor. Have two great guests, not just uh, uh, Andrew Messick, who's the president and CEO of Ironman Corporation, which, for the record, is a huge business, right? I mean, people underestimate the size of these businesses. A man's running a huge business, but more importantly, uh, a dear old friend of mine, Diana Birch, who's been the race director uh, of the Hawaii Ironman World Championships for a long, long time, and. And uh, just coming off her, uh, uh, her own battle with breast cancer, she's doing amazing. But a little, you know, just a little force in nature. And, and in, a, in, a, in a male-dominated world, she's one of the best in the business. I mean, she's, she's truly a legend. So real honor for us to have them uh, Skype in. Diana Birch, Andrew Messick, thanks for joining us. How is Aloha. it over there? How yeah, how's it in paradise? Uh, it, it's uh, it's uh, hot and humid, <laughs> but beautiful. It's it's always beautiful. Diana, you get the the good fortune of being able to live there full time. Yes, I'm very blessed. I, I absolutely love my home. Did uh, how uh, Diana? I don't I don't want to tread on anything I shouldn't, but I I want to just check on your health. Everything good there? I'm doing great. Thank you very much for asking. Yeah. You've been uh, so kind through through this time, so I, I really appreciate it. I'm doing really, really good. 
Yeah. You should was... see how much hair I have when it's not under this hat. It's crazy. <laughs> really? You got like an afro. No, no. Wait, hold, she, she, hold on. Hold play on. her card trick. She's gonna take her hat off. <laughs> Look oh at all this God. hair. Is that real hair? <laughs> yeah. This time it's real. Ish. It's awesome. Well, wow, that's that's good to hear. I said, but before we started the show here, or at the start of the show, I, Dave McGalvery. I don't know if you guys are aware, but he's yeah. got a big heart surgery tomorrow morning. So that's fingers crossed for him. Yep. No, he's yeah. uh, he's very much very much in uh, in all of our thoughts and yeah. uh, he's a le- he's an iron man too he's a legend yes he absolutely. is absolutely yeah D- look, diana i just i want to start with you because i want to as you get you know and i think you know this too i i had a home on the big island for a long time and so i think i understand the culture a little bit and 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 I, it's i'm just so curious of obviously the island and the locals support this event because of what it does for the for the island in general, economically or just just publicly, um, but how how is that relation between the locals, as they say, and 2,400 athletes, their friends, their family, their coaches, this just mafia of people that descend? You know the the thing that's so amazing about the island, and as you say, it's a special place. Um, but the race wouldn't happen if it wasn't for the community. Mm. It's the aloha, it's the uniqueness of this island, and and you have an entire community that comes together, over 5,000 volunteers that come together on one day to make it all happen. You know, it's something I think this community community can be incredibly proud of, to to put on something at this caliber on an island that's a world championship is really amazing, and it's not only that we have athletes come from all over the world to appreciate Mm -hmm. Hawaii, we take this island to the world so it's it's a very exciting time well that's true you definitely do and and um it's a special place i i, I miss being there and and riding on the queen k and and all the different it's the the riding there is so i mean obviously we, people will see the beautiful route of the iron man but once you get up into the kohalas and even up waimea on the backside, uh, all the valleys it's just it's, it's literally one of the best places to ride a bike in the world that's so nice to hear. Yeah. Are there any tweaks and change or changes this year that uh, if people have followed the Ironman annually to, to look for that might affect things? Uh, nothing that's going to affect anything, but our run course is different. Uh, we actually have a highway now for a section on the Queen Ka'ahumanu. So our run course will actually go a little bit further on Queen Ka'ahumanu and it enters into Nelha, but it's a new entrance. So the athletes will actually be in the natural energy lab much longer than they're accustomed to. So I think that what that's gonna change potentially is some, some run times, just because it's, it's a hot place to be. So it'll be exciting. It'll offer something new to the athletes, which I think offers some excitement. And I, I was, and I agree with all that, but I, 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 that all the times I've run there, Alehi Drive is like the stickiest, muggiest sec. It's like you're partly running, partly swimming. So, I, from what I understand, there's less time on Alehi Drive and more time in the in the Energy Lab. You're you're absolutely correct. You have about it's about three and a half miles on Alehi Drive where you turn around. Yeah. So there is less time on Alehi Drive, but I honestly feel this year with the the weather we're having on the island. Uh, it's been incredibly hot that there's not going to be much time where there won't be somebody hot and sticky. You know what? I'm really glad I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I am. I told JB and Andrew, you were, you, you both, all the three of us were there in 2012 and there was, I don't know if you guys saw this from the, from Honu, my, my, tr- yeah. How about that? <laughs> we yep. dug this out of storage the other day, but there was so much expectation and hype. And I told JB, I mean, I sh- for sure would have fucked it up. It would have been the worst <laughs> disaster of all time. I mean, <laughs> I'm kind of glad. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I have another question, because then the whole world watched a few months ago where the volcano there was going off and the VOG was terrible. I'm just, if that were to be the case today, like peak VOG, and for the listener, VOG is volcanic fog, so it's, and it's not ideal what would you two have done in that situation for the race 
Well, it's something that we actually talked about a lot. Yeah, but I think the thing <laughs> that was misrepresented here on the island is, and, and there's an active volcano, and there was a lot going on, but there was definitely an impression given by the media that it was much worse than it was, and and there was nothing, you know, you can't explain it. When you live on an island and it's beautiful and you have the skies that we have, when you have the vog roll in, everything looks different. And it was real and it was there, but it was never at the level that you have even in some big cities. So it's one of those things that we definitely monitored and we saw that there was times it would have created some challenges for us, but it was never at a point that we really needed to address it and couldn't be more grateful that Fissure 8 has stopped or has taken a pause and the skies couldn't be more beautiful, Lance. I have to yeah. tell you, you would love being here and seeing how blue the skies are right I, now. I, I would love that, just just spectating. But and, and by the way, I can't imagine that the media would ever think or make anything worse than it actually was. <laughs> no. That makes Why no, would they that, do none that? of that makes sense. What are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, that does, doesn't seem right. <laughs> JB, JB did, did you think they would ever do that? I come from media. Yeah, we blow everything out of proportion. <laughs> yeah. Andrew, let's talk about you. For I have a, just a fun question first. Um, what bib number is Barack Obama tomorrow? Is Barack Obama. That would be <laughs> no bib number whatsoever. One time, I, this is funny. This is inside baseball. I, I, I had a buddy who was, really wanted to do the... Kona. And I, I texted Andrew. I was like, could I get a buddy in? And he writes me back, is his name President Barack Obama? I was like, no. He's like, well, then no. <laughs> you, you, I was you, like, you, at the time, you didn't think that was nearly as funny as I did. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, how, how is the business of Iron Man? I mean, first of all, congrats on bringing in what is now arguably the biggest brand in the world as your sponsor in Amazon. Um, that's got to feel good and look good for, for, for or legitimize the event, the, the difficulty of it and, and the nature of it. Um, uh, but otherwise, I mean, how's business? Business is, business is good. You know, yeah. we're going to next year, we're going to have 41 Ironman races and 117 70.3s in 52 countries. Uh, we're continuing to, to see growth everywhere. Uh, you know, markets like the United States, where we've been for a long time, uh, continue to be pretty healthy, and we're seeing a lot of uh, you know a, a lot of communities embracing Ironman in, in places where we haven't historically been in Latin America and Eastern Europe, in in parts of Asia. Uh, but but we're start we're continuing to see you know a real embrace of the community and you know all around the world. I think people are are increasingly appreciating the benefits that being fit yep. uh, bring in terms of health and self-esteem and, and, and all of that. So we feel like we're, we're getting, we're doing well and we're getting pushed along by a, a good secular tailwind towards health and having Amazon as a, as a title pa partner and, and having our partnership with Facebook that's allowed us to, to really dramatically enhance the, the reach of and, and scope of our of our broadcast is um, is really helping. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna be live for 20 hours on Saturday, wow. starting at 4:30 in the morning with body marking, and we're gonna be live all the way to the end of the race till almost one o'clock in the morning. And and you need good partners to be able to do that. Uh, and we feel like we we've, we've got them, and we're really looking forward to being able to tell a, a great story about Iron Man on Saturday. Well, it's come a long ways, but at the, at the start of the show, we found somewhere on YouTube a clip from 1978 where the, the guy, I guess the, I should know all this, but the, the inventor, the, the founder of Iron Man was laying out the challenge and it looked like it was from the 30s <laughs> and there were 15 yep. people. Think about that in 40 years where we've come from 15, I mean, it looked, it looked like a skit mm -hmm. and boom. Here we are. It, it, it's it's quite astonishing. You know, all, all in just 40 years, uh, and, and I don't think that in John and Judy Collins, who were the original founders, ever would have imagined that what what was then, 
you know, a, a crazy challenge would turn into something that was so meaningful and so strong to so many people around the world. And, uh, you know, I think both Diana and I feel, you know, fortunate to, to be the stewards of, of Ironman and to, you know, help continue to find ways to, to make it relevant for people around the world. I can't help but wonder, because you go from 15 people to now 2,400 people, and you have to, there has to be a cutoff. There has to be a manageable amount of people, and the demand is high. It's such a bucket list people for any triathlete. If it was open to as many people as wanted, do you have any idea how many people that could possibly be? 25,000, 30,000 a year? Uh, I, think, I think it's more. I think it's wow. more. Yeah. I think it's more than that. I really do. That that just is, is mind blowing. It's just mind well, blowing. So so a couple of statistics that that we pay a lot of attention to. Um, about two percent of athletes qualify at our races around the world, and so in, in some age groups, depending on how big they are, you need to be you know better than the top two percent, and some a little bit worse, and it varies a little bit by by race size. But but on average. Um, you know, it's it's two percent, mm. and globally, you know, nine people who qualify who get their slot take it. So at races around the world, if if you get a Kona slot, in irrespective of whether that's in South America, whether it's in China, if you get a slot, you take it. And and so the, the demand for being here and for being at this race and for participating in this particular uh, Ironman World Championship is remarkably high uh the athletes are getting faster and faster you know it creates a whole series of operational challenges for diana and her team and you know it, and it's increasingly a problem it's a good problem but but nonetheless you know how do you keep the dream alive for people who can't finish in the top two percent of their age group um, and and we spend a lot of time on that because we want people connected to to this race and to hawaii and, and we just don't have and don't think we'll ever have anywhere near the ability to accommodate as many athletes as as want to want to race. Yeah, well, there's other ways. I mean, there's charitable people can buy some slots at auction. And they, they, by the way, I don't know if yeah. you know this, JB, but these slots that they auction off at like challenge athletes a and, guaranteed admission. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, they're going for six figures plus. Wow. Yeah. Just to get the opportunity to go suffer for 24 hours. <laughs> like, you know what? I think I'll spend a hundred grand just so I can really hurt myself <laughs> a lot. That's And spend months and months preparing for yeah, that. <laughs> exactly. Well, it, you know, part of, part of, I think, what, what makes people do that is that the field overwhelmingly, I think 95% of, of the field qualifies. Yeah. And so... You know, the, the number of people who, who, who can get in through the foundation or, or any other way is really small. And, and I think we, we feel strongly that it should remain that way, that, that for this particular race, you, the people you want to be surrounding yourselves with and the athletes want to surround themselves with are other people who were, you know, top tier guys. It's the best in the world. Yeah. Hey, how and, was the bikini run? Or no, it's not the, it's called the bikini run. Underpants okay. run. Underpants run. How was that? They had about 2,000 people out there in their underpants no today. No way. Are you kidding me? No, yeah. no kidding. A absolutely. It's one well, of the most popular events of the week. I can't imagine. We'll just a come for of, that, A lot JB. of hard bodies in preposterous underwear. Now, Andrew, were you out here in your underpants or no? I, I, I was not. I had... Uh, I had the good fortune to be able to go ride my bike this morning for a little bit of time. So I did that. All right. Well, we know you guys are busy. So I got one more question here. Uh, out of curiosity, and I think it's maybe more fair if I ask this and, and, and not coming from Lance, because you see some swimmer, some people were come from swimming, some come from running. Now we're starting to see people coming from professional cycling, probably more so than we have in the past. Mm -hmm. And there's, and if you followed Lance's career and we're a fan yeah. then there's a couple names that might ring a bell uh, Vinokurov and Jalabert I believe are going to be there this weekend I just yeah. you know 
not to stir up any controversy, but just wanted to see your thoughts on some some names like that that aren't, you know, there may be a, a, a bit of a cloud here or there, to put it politely. Just your thoughts on that. I mean, what 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 do you think? Well, you know, we're we're a company that organizes races, and and we have rules around who is eligible to be able to compete. And as signatories of the world anti-doping code, uh, we follow those rules. And so if, if athletes are eligible to compete, we allow them to compete. And I think that our community has their own point of view on, on what people have done over the course of their careers, uh, real or alleged. Um, and, and that's for each individual to follow their own conscience about whether they like it or don't like it. But as, as organizers of a series of races, um, if you're eligible, you can. And, and, and we don't go past that because it, the slope becomes super slippery, super quick. Sure. And when do you two get to breathe easy? When the gun goes off or when the last person crosses the finish line? Uh, I, I don't even think it's when the last person crosses the finish line. Um, but it, it definitely is a, a great moment at the end of the night when that last finisher does cross. And it's, it's something that you can't describe. Kona is a, it's magic here. It's a special place. And it's, it's a huge reason why people have the desire to come here. After 40 years, there's something that definitely there's a myth out there about what Kona is and what it's all about. So it's one of those things that there's nothing more special than that finish line on Ali'i Drive on Saturday night. And um, I don't know that there's any time that you really stop and, and let go throughout the day. There's always something that's, that's pressing, but the entire day is filled with excitement and just very blessed to be a part of a, a sport and a brand mm. that brings so much happiness and fulfills dreams mm. to so many people. For sure. For sure. Well, good luck to you all. Everybody can I, be can safe. I say one, what, one other thing that uh, d just I think is relevant in, in this day and age around as we talk about our 40th year, you know, 28 percent of the field is going to be female. And and that I was talking to Missy Lestrange, who is uh, you know, one of our I think she's raced here 30 times and won, I think, 17 world championships. Uh, so a super competent age grouper who, who first raced Hawaii in 1983 and it struck me when I was talking to her that that in 1983 Missy the Puntos twins mm -hmm. Julie Sweeney Lynn LaMare were all racing Hawaii at a time when there was no Olympic women's marathon when the UCI did not have a road race in the Olympics and and that because I think of the origin of Iron Man and that everybody thought everybody who did it was crazy. There, there was never any notion that a woman shouldn't be able to do it or should. It, it's, and, and so from the very beginning, I think Iron Man has, has been on the right side of you know, the, the issue around how women in sport are treated. And, and as we think back on 40 years, I think it was remarkable that Valerie Silk and the people who were in charge of the race, you know, had equal pro prize money for women from the very beginning, starting in 1986, right, right. and that there was never any any question at all about whether women should be able to race at Ironman. If you want to race, sure, go ahead. Um, and and I think we're proud of that, and and especially uh, in this day and age, I think it's uh, as we celebrate 40 years, that's. That's something that uh, that's meaningful to us. And and you should be, Andrew. Well said. I, nobody can say it better than that. And you should be very proud of that. And and the best example I can think of is sitting over to your right, a woman who runs one of the largest sporting events in the world and pulls it off better than anybody and has done it for decades. So the, we have an example right there, which is awesome. Thank you very much, Lance. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. And by the way, you made me sound really old when you said the Puntos twins. Like, I did tries <laughs> with the Puntos twins. <laughs> Anyways, y'all be safe. Have a great race. All right. Aloha. Thanks for tuning Aloha. in. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by a true triathlon legend. In fact, he's such a legend, and we go way back, which we're going to get into. But 
uh, being inducted into the Iron Man Hall of Fame, JB. And we, as Scott was just telling us, there's different Hall of Fames in triathlon. I, I, I propose that we clean this up a little bit at some point, Tri World. But uh, Scott Molina, congratulations, one of the big four. Thank you very much. It's, it's a wonderful honor. And um, I, I honestly didn't know a hell of a lot about the, this Hall of Fame uh, until I got a phone call uh, from Greg Welch earlier in the year asking me, asking me if I'd be in it. And uh, it's like, <laughs> oh, I guess so. You know, well, what's it all about? And so I looked at the names on that list and it's like, wow. You know, they, they haven't been um, doing their Hall of I think it started in the 90s, right? Yeah. So so it, it's it's a pretty a new a new thing. And uh, But anyway, it's, it's great to join that list. It's a real privilege. And for those of you at home uh, who, who haven't followed the sport that long, Scott won the Hawaii Ironman World Championships in 1988. Um, I actually found some old clips on the Internet today of, of you winning. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to give Mark Allen a little grief. I found it on his coaching site old coverage and then at the end when you're like coming like the last couple miles he's got a rolling stone song plan and i'm like mark i don't know if the rolling stones are going to be too cool with that <laughs> uh, well I, I i don't know well <laughs> but you look you're you looked awesome okay well that's good news <laughs> there's a lot of moments in life that we never thought would be a click away at everyone's computer or tablet or phone which is remarkable now right for sure. I mean, you got to remember in 88, the, the Internet had not even been invented yet. Right. So the fact that they pull that footage from somewhere and, 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 and post it up is, you know, it's remarkable. Scott, before I forget, and I because I, uh, you know, so many people that listen to this show are are in Kona. Maybe it's their first time there. It's their first Ironman on the Big Island. And I, I really, you know, I, I think people ha- have more in store for themselves than they think um and so i i always love to get guys like you to just for 60 seconds if you could just if you could sit with a first timer male female young old doesn't matter fast slow whatever like what are the three like if they're listening right now like here are the three things that you cannot screw up or here are the three things that you absolutely have to do any of those come to mind yeah, sure, sure. I, I know you've spent a lot of time here mm-hmm. and um, and have done the, the 70.3 and trained a lot here. And, and, and you know, it's a, it's a miserable freaking place to do a race, you know. It's, it's absolutely <laughs> stupid that they have this world championship here, you know. It's ridiculous. Now, no, so, at some point, tell us how you really feel. <laughs> okay. But, but, so, so, so I guess my, my three tips would be if, if you think you're going too hard, you are. Yep. Slow down. Slow down. Don't be stupid, you know. Um, second, uh, don't take in too much, you know, uh, absorbing stuff, no matter what it is, is a matter of how hard you're going. Yep. You know, if you're, if you're sitting down at Thanksgiving, you can absorb a thanks, uh, a turkey dinner, you know, cause you're sitting there doing nothing. Mm-hmm. If you're going hard, you can't absorb that much. So don't take in too much. Yep. And the third thing is it's going to be hard. You know, don't think you've done all this training that somehow the perfect race is going to be easy. It's going to be hard. It's going to be miserable. And that's all part of the deal. That's what you signed up for. That's right. I, I think especially that second one, the, the, the whole the calculations around intake and uh, nutrition and hydration versus effort and what the gut can, uh, you know, how the gut can even perform to absorb things. It's, you know, people think, oh, I'm, I'm out here for 13 hours and I'm going really, really hard. So I must be able to have a cheeseburger every hour. Like it it just doesn't work that way, you know? And I made that mistake back in 2012 when I dove back into that sport and, and, and lo and behold, finally I said, you know what, I'm just going to eat nothing or eat very, very little. And then I started, that was the key, right? And because the gut, and of course everybody's different and some people can tolerate things better, but the stomach is a special uh, organ that just you got to be super delicate with yeah if, if you're going hard really hard mm-hmm. like let's say you're running track let's say you're doing a track session and you're doing 800 meter reps you know are you gonna are you gonna put down a, a chicken sandwich no way you know you can't even you can't even swallow water and, right. and you, you know you're feeling like you're gonna throw up yeah. so so yeah the harder you go the less you can absorb and yeah. so you know so if you're going hard you know you better not put much in that stomach Kind of similarly, I'd like to ask you a, a, 
a few things to share with everybody. Now that you're going into the Hall of Fame and you've you did this, you know, back in the eighties and and you're reflecting back on what being a an Ironman triathlete did for you, your life, whether it's personally, professionally, would have been a few things that again you would might tell a young athlete, hey, later in life you're gonna look back and this is how it's going to affect your life. Do a few things come to mind? Yeah, a few, I, I suppose. You know, when I started this journey, like uh, uh, we had the Hall of Fame ceremony uh, at the Palace last night. And I was thinking back, you know, my first trip here in 81, you know, what what was I thinking? You know, I was I was a pretty good athlete and, and I thought I, you know, knew what I was was in for. But, of course, you know, it, it this sport does grab a hold of you. And most sports do, you know, like like – I have a lot of good friends who are cyclists back in Christchurch, and um, and when you commit to being a better athlete, you know, you you when you start that journey, uh, if you have like an addictive personality, like I do, and probably Lance, you know, <laughs> I mean, you you what, you don't know what you're signing up for, really. The the you know you're signing up once once you get into these things, you know, and so. I would say don't expect to do a, a whole lot else uh, for a while. Mm-hmm. You know, that would, that would be a, what I would have told my young self. You know, you, you're starting this journey. You're committing to being the best athlete you can be. Put everything else on hold for a little while, indefinitely, actually. Um, that would be the main thing. And uh, the second thing, I, th- I suppose, is that um, don't expect it to pay. You know, because <laughs> for for ninety nine point five or nine percent of people uh, who are starting out, young athletes, you know, just do it because you want to do it, and that's it. You know, there's don't 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 have an ulterior motive. Don't think you're going to make a living out of it because ch- chances are are very slim that you will. Yeah. And so, if if you're doing it for the right reasons, if you do it because you want to be a, a good athlete and see where you can go in your sport, then that's enough. Yeah. Good advice. What is, is, you know, because I was always so surprised. I mean, you know, I, I, when you and Aaron got together and you moved to New Zealand, I was like, all right, that's great. Like, they'll be there a couple years, then they're going to come back. Like, well, hell, it's been 25 years. I mean, what, like, what do you do all day in New Zealand? I mean, I'm sure it's awesome, but like, what? What are you doing? <laughs> well, at, at first, you know, it was about having a family and raising our kids and getting the hell out of the USA because I didn't want to raise my kids there. You know, that was that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I thought the, even back then the commercialism and uh, the expectations of the stuff that you have to have, you know, if you're an American kid, you know, even back in the in the 80s and 90s, I thought, no, I don't I don't want I don't want my kids to grow up in that environment. And so that was the main reason we moved there, you know, right. and, and we didn't know we were going to be there forever, you know, but um, I started working as a personal trainer and a coach and um, and. And then our kids started school, and um, you know it was, it was an easy, comfortable life. And yeah. and the, our two main worries in in New Zealand, well, I should say the two main worries that people have, like about money and about your kids, we didn't have those. Right. In Christchurch, we didn't have, we didn't have to worry about any of that shit. You know, so so it was a very stress free life. And, um, you know, and all these Americans are on Expedia right now, looking booking tickets to New Zealand. I know. Go raise their kids over there. <laughs> Like that's well, cool. you know, let's see if Trump gets elected to another term. I think we'll have about 20 million, <laughs> 20 million people flocking to New Zealand. The, uh, you know, you, you are a Hall of Famer, but I was I saw this stat today as I was reading up about you and trying to catch some recent footage. And Aaron, so we're talking about Aaron Baker, Scott's wife. Um, there was some what did I say on the call today? I mean, she she won 80 of 105 of her race or. More than more well, than 100 of 120, 124 amazing. races. I think so you start. Okay, let me get that. So you start 124 races, and you win 104. That is fucking crazy. No, no, she was. <laughs> Where she is was, she? Yeah. Why isn't she? Why aren't we talking to her? Pass the camera. <laughs> she's, out having, she's out having lunch and a wine, I'm sure. But yeah, she was. She was. Uh, you know, she won almost every freaking time she started a race. Um, I, I do have a good story uh, for you, Lance. You'll remember this. Um, one of the odd races that she did was called the Challenge of Champions, and oh, you were sure. there. Yeah. Uh, 
a young a young Lance Armstrong, very very baby face. So I don't think he started shaving by then. And uh, and she said it was a fantastic event. She was so sad that it it, it, um, it didn't keep going because it right. brought together runners and cyclists and triathletes, you know, all under the uh, same event. And she said it was really really cool. I agree. I agree. That was at Laguna Seca. So they had. You know, you had like Ned Overend and Tomac from the mountain bike side. You had some road cyclists. You had uh, runners. You had, uh, I think Sousa was there. I was there. And you had to do, there were five options. And you had, to, I think you had to do four of the five. And so you could pick whatever you wanted to do. And I was, you're right, I was young. I was probably 18 years old. And, uh, and they had a point system set up. And, and I won the thing. I was like, but yeah. I, I knew, I was like, well, I can... Uh, like this suited me perfect man i agree it was such a cool event and and also you know for a sport like try which is tough to televise it was great for tv because it was on the laguna seca track yeah. easy to televise it was it was killer yeah when you're married to someone with that kind of winning track record are they just intolerable do you lose every argument uh well it, it's very <laughs> difficult to wear the pants of my family um <laughs> i must say but um but we have been together 30 years, so she's, you know, she, we've 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 managed to figure things out and compromise, and um, but she's she's a tough tough bird, that's for sure. Yeah. That's I tough. also married an Aaron Baker. Right. Oh, really? In case you didn't. There's now an Aaron Hager. <laughs> uh, do you have any predictions for Saturday? Do you, do you like to go there or not? <laughs> well, you know, I, I I do follow the sport, um, not not super close, um, but enough uh, to know. Uh, Shook hands with Jan Ferdino last night. Of course, he's not racing. He has stress fracture, so he's out. And that, that threw a big uh, monkey wrench in the whole works. Yes, for sure. Uh, yeah, that half Ironman he, he did uh, last month in South Africa was absolutely amazing. Yeah. And so, so he, was, he was the prohibitive favorite, but he's out. Um, so in the men's race, my, my pick is probably Javier Gomez. <laughs> I saw him at the really? pool this morning. You know, I was swimming down in the in the pool this morning, and he was there, and and we chatted briefly. And he has a very serious look on his face. He's he's given up a hell of a lot to be here. I mean, that guy. You know, he's he's won every single thing else that he can win, including Xterra. I mean, the guy. You know, he's he is a winner, and so he's he's not going to come here anything less than a hundred hundred percent prepared. But so, Scott, I mean, I I and I completely completely agree with you, but. But it, it that Kona factor having never I mean it, look he he can win I don't know eight Ironmans but can you come on your first try on the rock in those conditions totally inexperienced I I think that's a tall task and look maybe if he does it then shit hats off but I, I think it's very difficult to pull off your first time there I agree I agree only Luke Van Lardy's done it for the men really um, in the modern era and uh, and so so yeah I think you're right but but um but he has a whole history of 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 the sport uh to to re to know about and reflect on mm -hmm. and and he's just the kind of guy who just does his homework you know mm -hmm. so so i even my my well i i don't i'm not saying he's gonna win i'm saying you know he's he's my dark horse but the guy the Pat patrick langa that he's run 240 marathons here twice I mean, Jesus Christ! That 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 guy that guy must have a lot of confidence, you know. No, to, the, the, we like we don't like we watch one Iron Man a year. Like we were watching like, like the, him at the end of the marathon last year. I was like, did the dude just start running? Like, did they just let him do a five k? He was <laughs> flying. It was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. The guy the guy floats at six minutes a mile. Yeah. In a hundred degree weather at the end of eight hours, it's yeah. it's it's remarkable. Yeah. So yeah, you you couldn't you you can't go past him, um, and some of the other guys, you know, like um, the possessed uh, Lionel Sanders. Canadian Lionel, Lionel Sanders. Sanders. I mean, this is what a what a what a what a fucking lunatic is this guy i mean <laughs> honestly like training in his closet in the heat uh, duh, 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 duh. i mean it, that's mental yeah yeah and 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 it is a mental race so yeah. so you have to you have to to give the guy credit for for not only doing his homework but for having the mental capacity to win this sucker to suffer enough to 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 win you know yeah. so yeah you can't look look past Lionel either I think it's gonna be a great race yeah and Daniela Daniela Reef is just I mean the, 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 we were talking to some people earlier that there's speculate or talk that she could finish top 10 overall 
Yeah, I, I have the dubious uh, honor of having the closest finish between the male winner and the female winner. Congrats. When I won, Paula was uh, almost exactly 30 minutes behind me. Wow. Most of the time, the women are like 45, 50, right? Yeah. But Daniela um, last year was about 44, I think, minutes behind, uh, 40, 40, 40, 40, give 42 minutes about approximately behind the males. But she's better. You know, her mm -hmm. races this year have been off the charts. And so, no, I don't, I don't see anybody challenging that woman. She's just spectacular. Yeah, yeah. Man, it is good to see you again. I got a, I got a, what, the funny little story. I was down in um, uh, New Zealand a few years ago for a thing, and I got contacted by Richard Wells. Remember our old buddy oh, Rick Wells? Oh, yeah. And so we went out one night, had a good old dinner, good catch up. So uh, next time I'm down there, we'll, we'll get us all, we'll get the band together and, and go out and have some fun. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm amazed that guy is still above ground, that his liver has not exploded, you know. Um, <laughs> he, looked good, he looked good to me. He, this, yeah. he, he, this dude was like a linebacker. He looked good, man. Yeah, Silver yeah, Fox, yeah. ripped, ready yeah. to party. Yeah, yeah. He's always been a good, good drinking buddy. We catch up every now and then. Good. Hey, have fun over there, Scott. Thank you very much. And congratulations well, on that Hall of Fame. Thanks. It was, it's it's cool. been a okay. pleasure, and, and it's been it's been fun to be back here again. Awesome. Enjoy it. Thanks, okay. Scott. Well, we will be back for a recap show. The way yep. it times out, I mean, it finishes late, late, late for us yep. on Saturday night. So Sunday morning. And we have Metallica Saturday night, <laughs> most importantly. <laughs> so Sunday morning recap, and then we'll put it into the, your feeds for yeah. audio and video yeah. that day. And, and again, just a special shout out. We will, I know we talked a lot during the tour about Patron, and they were so generous to be our presenting sponsor, and we named a Patron every day. Nothing's changed. Patron is still the presenting sponsor of the move, and we will name a Patron of uh, two Patrons. Well, uh, if, if Daniela Reef finishes top 10 overall men and women, there's only she one Patron. <laughs> there's not going to, yeah. I ain't giving out a second. I'm just saying. So uh, that's, uh, I cannot wait to see that attempted. There you go. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. Talk to you Sunday.